so my talk is going to be on uh, this morning is going to be on uh, giving you an overview on um, on guidelines of uh, on prostate cancer on uh, clinical localized prostate cancer. Uh, these were recently released last year by the uh, AUA, uh, Astro, and uh, SUO, and also they came out recently uh, in the Journal of Urology uh, in December and in, in January, uh, just a few weeks ago. Uh, the methodology they, as every, you know, as usually uh, guidelines are done, is by by a, a systematic literature search, uh, which is well done. Uh, they did this job and by looking at the papers uh, that are in the literature over the past ten years in different databases. Uh, we uh, already uh, saw from other speakers that there are uh, the way they grade the evidence on on the topic is by using uh, different levels and. Uh, uh, depending on if you have randomized trials or less, um, a less uh, well done trial, uh, they, they 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 can give a recommendation. We can be which uh, therefore can be strong if you have a you know high level uh, level one uh, uh, evidence, uh, a grade B uh, if they, 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 there are randomized trial which are uh, weaker uh, or observational well done observational studies and grade C if there is. Uh, uh, you know, not really much evidence. And also there are other um, uh, instances where you have a just what is called clinical principle. Basically, you know, the, 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 the panel may can uh, uh, agree that uh, they might, you know, there's no, no, not enough evidence, but they might be, that could be the way to go. Or even expert opinion where uh, that is a, even a lower uh, stage of, uh, of evidence. Now, uh, there are uh, in these guidelines. There are uh, about 68 statements. I, I won't, uh, you know, I won't. I can. I don't have the time to go over all of them, but I will focus on uh, of most of them. Uh, and the, they group the uh, recommendation by uh, by the different uh, areas. The first one is share uh, decision making. The second is the uh, the all the topic of risk stratification of this patient. That then they don't then uh, of course dictate the, the therapy. And also, then they give several recommendations on, on these specific uh, um, uh, care options that the clinician uh, has. And last but not least, uh, some, um, something about the expectation and, and follow-up of this patient. So about the shared decision-making, I just want to point out a couple of things. Uh, first, that um, counseling is important, and when you discuss treatment with this patient prostate cancer, you should always consider uh, what are the, uh, you know, the, the lifestyle is and what are the, uh, the expectation they have, and discuss with them uh, all the symptoms that they might already have, because all these things can, can put into the uh, equation when you have to decide what treatment to offer to this patient. Also, uh, and uh, this is also a, a good, another thing that has a good uh, level of evidence, so moderate recommendation from the panel is that you, you should always discuss uh, these cases in a multidisciplinary setting, uh, and therefore uh, discuss the you know that specific case with your medical oncologist, radiation oncology doctor. Um, try to make the best decision. Then the panel uh, go over the uh, the other concept that is uh, very important, uh, which is the risk stratification. This is basically uh, uh, mainly based on the two uh, papers, the D'Amico paper, which is a very you know old and well known paper, um, and also the more recent Epstein uh, grading system, where they, uh, they and I'm going to show you another slide later, where they uh, now uh, identified as uh, five uh, grades of uh, of risk uh, uh, of the disease. Uh, so uh, the so basically the the classification is uh, you can have a very low uh, p a very low prostate uh, risk of prostate cancer when the PSA is lower than ten. The, it belongs to a grade group one, which basically means a Gleason six, and clinical stage uh, is T one or T two A. And then also when you have in the biopsy specimen some other information, so uh, less than uh, at up to a third of the specimen can be positive and, and no core with more than 50 percent of, of positive of involvement by, two, by cancer and also they look at the another criteria can be the uh, PSA density less than uh, 0 0.15. Uh, if you remove all this information from the biopsy you are left with the uh, with only with the PSA grade group 1 and clinical stage T1 and uh, T2A that is a low risk category. You go then higher to the intermediate, intermediate risk which is uh, uh, the PSA uh, 10 to 20, the grade group is 2 and 3, which means uh, the, Gleason, uh, the Gleason 7. And then the clinical stage is a little bit higher to T2, T2, B, and C. And then there is a sub-certification here they recommend, which is favorable and favorable. Basically, those with the Gleason 6 or Gleason uh, 3 plus 4 
uh, and those with the glison 4 plus T are uh, those who are with unfavorable, unfavorable um, pathology. And then, of course, the, you have the high risk group, which is the one with the higher PSA uh, and higher glison score, and of course, with the palpable locally advanced disease. <coughs> Uh, nothing, I think nothing new here, I will say. Uh, in terms of staging, now they go through the different stages. So for those with very low uh, uh, risk cancer and low risk cancer, uh, it's, I think it's always good to re-stress that you don't need to do any uh, imaging in these patients because uh, they, um, there is a really uh, low risk, they, they very, very minimal uh, uh, chance they might have anything outside the prostate. And in this category, uh, the, uh, in, in the category of very low risk patients, again, and I put this here, I left this here up here so you can uh, uh, follow me. Uh, basically, those with a minimal burden of disease on, on, on the prostate besides having a low PSA uh, and a low Grison score, uh, you, easily the recommendation is to, pro to proceed with active surveillance. And this is because there are data out there but that says that the risk, of, uh, the risk for this patient to have metastatic progression is very low in the long term. Um, and therefore, again, the, the, um, the, that is the, the best option for this patient. Uh, also, for the low-risk guy, uh, the, the active surveillance is the uh, recommended preferable option you should offer to them. However, there are subset of patients where you, consider, you can consider, even if they have uh, low-risk disease, to offer a treatment, active treatment, in ter in, uh, and, uh, and as we know, is there either radical prostatectomy or radiation uh, therapy. Uh, because those patients might have a higher uh, uh, probability of progression, and they identify some risk factors, so to be Afro-American, have a perineural invasion, family history of prostate cancer, as uh, some of the criteria. Um, the, um, in this uh, group of patients with low-risk cancer, the, you, um, the, it shouldn't be, uh, you shouldn't add the ADT uh, uh, to reduce the prostate if you offer brachytherapy, and the cryotherapy could be could be, uh, could be an option, uh, however, the uh, evidence level is C, as you can see, um, because there, there is no survival benefit that has, has been shown for this, uh, uh, for this option if you compare to just the active surveillance. Uh, whereas uh, the IFU uh, is not standard care because the, uh, the evidence for this is uh, still uh, lower. Now we go to the intermediate risk uh, group. Again, as I said, they dis uh, make a distinction between favorable and favorable. Uh, this is the, 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 the thing I was mentioning before. Now, basically, they redid the, a grading system based on the Gleason score system. Uh, you have group one, six, uh, group two is three plus four, group three, four plus three, and, and so on, and four and five, uh, which can be easier probably also when you're canceling, uh, you are canceling the patient. Uh, it's difficult to sometimes to explain the Gleason score. It's easier probably to just say you are in, in class two or class three uh, out of five. Uh, and of course, uh, these are, uh, um, and, and so these are the criteria they use to define these patients. Uh, and uh, again, now we are talking about intermediate risk patient. In this case, uh, they, if they, are, uh, they have unfavorable uh, subcategory, they, you sh they should uh, undergo to um, a CAT scan, to so imaging CAT scan and bone scan to define um, the staging, the clinical staging. Regarding the treatment of intermediate risk patient, uh, there are some data of randomized, large randomized trial uh, the Scandinavian trial showing there is a better overall survival, cancer-specific survival uh, in those who receive the radical prostatectomy. Uh, also, there, uh, there is a, uh, re a reduction in the risk of death uh, after the sur uh, if they have surgery uh, and, and uh, from prostate cancer. And this is the Scandinavian trial. There is a, po a pivot trial, which is the American trial, um, and also in this uh, trial they show that um, even though the in, in the general uh, study population. Uh, was not significant, the cancer, the reduction in, in cancer risk that uh, they found a significant uh, an advantage in, uh, in intermediate risk guys uh, who received treatment. And, uh, and then there is the product trial, which is the, the last one on the, uh, the, who, came, which, who came on the stage, uh, the European trial, uh, which, also, uh, which, uh, which also showed that key, uh, clinical progression and, and, and metastatic progression were lower in those who were randomized to receive a treatment, prostatectomy or radiation. Based on all this evidence from level one evidence, then the, the recommendation of the panel is that uh, you should uh, recommend radical treatment, radical, uh, radical, radical prostatectomy, or radiation plus uh, ADT as a standard option for this patient. And again, with a higher level of evidence level A. Um, uh, these, uh, the, the one with, we, uh, who have a favorable, um, 
where uh, the subgroup of favorable intermediate risk, they may have, uh, you can discuss with them, uh, and this is, of course, the job of the radiation oncology doctor uh, to discuss the, of not taking hormones. However, um, the, there are some uh, randomized studies here that showing that uh, actually giving hormones um, uh, have a better, uh, a better, a better effect. Um, in select patients with intermediate risk uh, uh, cancer, uh, also other uh, uh, other uh, options can be offered. And uh, I'm talking about cryosurgery, uh, as well as active surveillance uh, in those who are who have favorable uh, characteristics. Uh, however, explaining to the patient that there is higher risk that uh, they might progress to metastatic disease, uh, uh, because we are not talking here about uh, uh, low risk, uh, low, low risk disease. Whereas the IFU is given a lower role compared to, to the cryo, uh, just because the evidence uh, um, is um, still lacking. Um, the staging for high risk disease, of course, in this patient, you have to also get imaging to see if they have any metastatic site. Um, and uh, in terms of therapy, uh, there are, uh, again, the same studies, Scandinavian trial, trial um, uh, showing that uh, 15 years that all-cause mortality was in favor of radical prostatectomy versus watch, watchful waiting, as well as uh, prostate cancer-specific mortality. And the PO trial, the American trial, also demonstrated, did not demonstrate an overall survival, but did, did demonstrate a better, um, a, a lower uh, risk of bone metastasis at 10 years and 12 years uh, in favor of radical prostatectomy. And based on this finding, then the recommendation again is the, to treat this patient, with, to offer this patient treatment with radical prostatectomy or radiation uh, plus uh, ADT. Uh, again, this is level one. Uh, whereas in this uh, category of patient, high risk patient, you really should not recommend uh, uh, active surveillance, you should not recommend cryo or uh, IFU as a focal therapy, uh, and you also should not recommend ADT as a form of treatment because there is no evidence supporting uh, these, uh, um, uh, these options. And this is a summary of what just I, I said. Uh, basically, again, very, very low risk active surveillance, strong recommendation. Uh, the low risk, uh, the, uh, the, the, you should go for active or you can uh, consider treatment. Uh, the intermediate risk, uh, it is the, where you have to offer treatment in form of surgery or radiation. Uh, uh, cryosurgery could be a role, could have a role, uh, as well as the same thing for uh, the uh, uh, for the unfavorable uh, risk patient. Uh, high risk patient, there is no role for other form of therapy other than the, the standard. Uh, the panel then moved on on giving some uh, specific. Uh, um, uh, information about the di these different um, uh, care options that the patient have. The, the first one is active surveillance. Uh, then uh, the active surveillance, uh, the patient who goes for active surveillance uh, should uh, have been studied with uh, with the uh, with the systematic uh, biopsy. Uh, they mentioned there is no uh, remains limited, and this can be source of discussion. The transperineal approach. Uh, there is a controversy about. Uh, whether or not to perform a confirmatory biopsy in patients who have a negative MRI, and targeted biopsy can be performed, and we discussed about this in, in, in other, uh, a, few, a couple of days ago, uh, if, how you do the targeted biopsy. And uh, the uh, RE still remains an important part of the assessment. Uh, then, as I said, uh, besides DRE, uh, PSA testing, but there is no optimal frequency of PSA testing and DRE in this patient. Uh, you can look at some of the study, but there, are no clear recommend there is no clear recommendation from the panel. Uh, also, uh, they should, uh, there is a, a clinical principle, again, because the evidence is not high, but it is recommended to have a biopsy within the initial uh, two years um, of, um, of the protocol. This is a, a snapshot of the main studies done on active surveillance. And from all these studies, you can basically, these are kind of the, uh, the conclusion. Uh, there, there are different criteria by which you can define how to uh, select the patient from, from uh, act, uh, by which the, the others use of this study used to define the, the patient eligible for active surveillance. Uh, several sites recommend to repeat biopsy before, so they just immediately repeat the biopsy after, uh, to before embarking in the active surveillance, but uh, in, in reality, you can delay biopsy up to a year, uh, does really uh, have an impact. Uh, and you can uh, follow up different strategies, uh, of course, based on the PSA, DRE, and uh, uh, repeat biopsy. But there is no criteria also to define uh, interve uh, you know, when you then intervene. Um, and uh, also the biopsy interval is the varies from among these studies. There are some uh, scientific bodies that the, 
like this, the uh, Cancer Care Ontario guidelines, they've been adopted by ASCO, where they recommend PSA to every uh, three to six months, uh, DRE each, each year, uh, systematic biopsy within a year, and then every uh, three, five years. And this could be a protocol, for example. Uh, clinicians should consider a multi-parametric MRI as component of the axis surveillance. We discussed about this, uh, and uh, I don't think uh, I can uh, add much more from what uh, Peter said the other day. Um, and the, uh, the, there is no role, uh, based on uh, uh, opinion of the expert, is that there is no role for genomic biomarkers. And uh, um, the, um, when the, uh, also the recommendation grade A, uh, grade B, uh, uh, evidence uh, B moderate recommendation is that when these patients are reclassified, they should be offered treatment. And the risk of this is, uh, in these uh, big studies, are between 20% and 50%. Uh, radical prostatectomy, as we know, is usually should be offered for younger healthy men um, with the, uh, more than 10 years of uh, uh, life expectancy, um, and because these are the men where uh, the, you know, we can offer benefit uh, by treating the cancer, uh, they live enough to get benefit, benefit, some benefit from the treatment. Open robotic, we discussed about that also, and there is no, uh, um, not enough evidence that is that to say that one is better than the others. There are some details, for example, the blood loss might be less with robotic. Uh, certainly there is evidence that the nerve setting approach can preserve uh, erectile function, and also that um, uh, uh, they also, another point is here is the grade level A that, um, uh, uh, sh should not treat, uh, sh uh, prostate cancer should not be treated uh, with no neoadjuvant uh, ADT. Also, this could, I think, would be a, a, a matter of discussion. Um, the other, the panel then, the recommendation of the panel, again, just expert opinion about lymphadenectomy, uh, usually for high risk disease, uh, affordable uh, intermediate risk disease, uh, but it comes with the cost of some complication if you do an extended lymphadenectomy. Uh, and then uh, the Talk about now switching to radiation therapy uh, for sake of time. Uh, this is the uh, usually the uh, what I want to point out that the, the standard is in uh, is the uh, use of uh, giving two or three years of hormones along with radiation um, or in combination with brachytherapy for patients uh, with uh, who, are off, who are offered treatment uh, which are again the intermediate risk patient uh, or the uh, high risk patient. Uh, of course, the ADT comes also with the cost in terms of side effects. Um, and that's pretty intuitive. Uh, these are other statements they make regarding the uh, how to do the uh, uh, specific to radiation therapy, um, and I will probably skip this one. Uh, then uh, they uh, have several recommendations, and uh, as you will see, the uh, level of evidence on this on the cryotherapy is low, uh, but uh, the, the wall gland cryotherapy can be uh, considered in, as we said, as we saw already in low intermediate risk localized prostate cancer patient. Um, and that's an option, uh, but um, there is still uh, not definitive conclusion about cancer's uh, mortality outcome, um, and therefore it's again the, the grade of recommendation is, is a C for for this uh, for this treatment. Uh, then also there are some uh, clinical principles, so some kind of um, expert recommendation. Uh, you if you have a um, prior to RP, you shouldn't do that. Uh, the, uh, you should use a higher, a last gen, of course, latest generation machine. Um, uh, you should explain to the patient that ED could be a side effect. IFU uh, still uh, that uh, there is really a lack of evidence to support this treatment uh, to date. Uh, the uh, expert point out is, uh, is FDA approved for FDA approved for uh, destruction of prostate tissue, not for treatment of prostate cancer. Uh, and uh, uh, last but not least, they made some recommendation also on the side effect. You should explain to the patient that you can have specific side effects, for example, uh, ED uh, and also or proctitis for uh, radiation, uh, radiation therapy. Um, and uh, also uh, the other thing I want to say, they, they should, you should also explain, also explain to the patient they should be follow up with, uh, with PSA, but PSA uh, does always relapse, doesn't always mean that they're gonna die for, from the disease. And then, uh, last, but not, then last but not least, the panel uh, uh, gives some uh, direction for future, uh, future line of research. Uh, these are mostly uh, from the upcoming analysis of the protect, uh, 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 trial data. Uh, also some study that should, will be done, uh, are being done uh, in, uh, in terms of uh, comparing brachytherapy versus uh, 
uh, versus uh, bra com combination of brachy versus uh, and radiation therapy, or studies on lymphadenectomy uh, during radical, radical prostatectomy, and also on the utility of these new imaging modalities. These are also a f this is also an important field of research. And with this, I would like to thank once again for the invitation, the panel, uh, John, uh, Jerry, uh, Margit, and above all, my friend Fernando. It's really an honor that I was uh, able, uh, I was uh, invited to speak at this meeting. So thanks.